Quick and simple project today. I'm making a bunch of spacers that look like this. They're going to go in the upper back of my closet to improve airflow to prevent wintertime mold. So in our master bedroom, we have these three closets. And recently we were doing spring cleaning. And when I was pulling the clothes off the top shelf, we found mold on the back wall. Now I'll throw up a diagram here, but the way our house is built, sort of the top 18 inches of the closets is exterior wall. The rest of it is interior. In January this year, we had a particularly cold January. So I think what happened is, you know, the closets are on an outside wall. It's packed full of sweaters up there and there's just no air movement. And so the cold gradually migrated in and then, you know, condensation happened and mold grew and all that sort of thing. And one solution is just to use like bins on your top shelf. That has, that has a gap. Let's air get around it. But that doesn't necessarily suit our lifestyle. I like just having sweaters and sweatshirts and all that piled on the shelf. And the solution I came up with is to just make what kind of looks like a little pallet, or just a little slatted gizmo where there's this air gap. And I'm gonna have a nice big one that's gonna go across the back wall of the closet. And I know this solution is gonna work because this is also an outside wall. And several years ago, we had some mold here on the outside wall. And at that time I made this one here, one on the upper shelf, and we've had no mold problems since then. So let's go down to the shop. Let's get those big ones built. So I made this one several years ago and I'm going to make a couple of more just like this one, except much longer. They're going to be like 45 inches long to fit across the back of the closet, but the same 12 inches high. And yes, it just looks like a small pallet. These are just thin strips of wood, maybe an eighth of an inch thick. We'll just use lots of scraps up for that. And some strips here that will give us an air gap across the back. And we're even going to cut notches along these vertical pieces to keep as much air gap as possible. So here's what I'm going to dig into all these thin strips that I've been keeping for years, but not sure how many of them are going to be long enough. Okay, that should give me plenty of slats and then this should give me plenty of the uprights and I'm going to first going to cut these into a little over 12 inches and then we will rip them down to like three eighths of an inch by three quarters of an inch. So I now have more than enough pieces for these uprights and a lot of really nice kindling. And if you think that was a lot of table sawing, I got a whole bunch more to do to make all these little eighth inch slats. And I'm gonna do that off camera just in the interests of taking the boring stuff out of the video. So for these cross pieces, I want something like these notches in the bottom, but I have an idea. And so I've put the straight bit in my router and I'm gonna mount that in my table. And I'm setting the fence at, well, a quarter inch or so. Something like that doesn't really matter as long as it's something. So using these was definitely the right move. So I was having trouble with the first one and I realized my router bit was pretty dull. So I switched to a different router bit. And then the first piece snapped and it was uh, really kind of scary. And I thought, you know, I just need an air gap. It doesn't need to be a really deep hole. So I, I moved the fence. So I'm taking a shallower cut. And then like, for instance, here's two of them together. I just need some room for some air. And then it went okay. But again, keep the fingers far away from the router bits. I don't need a super great finish, but I do need to give these at least a basic sanding. And I'm going to do try to get as much possible done on this belt sander so that we can skip ahead as quickly as possible. I want to cut all these strips to length, so I turned them on their side and I clamped them together so that I can just make one cut to cut all of them at the same time. Okay, I'm ready to put one together. I'm putting five cross pieces. This first one, I've got it clamped right here along the edge of the bench. Then over at this end, I clamped a square in place with my long reach clamp so I can slide the other one up against that. Then I'm going to put a dab of glue at each of the four corners. Then I check the diagonals to make they're the same. Then I will lock it in place with the clamp and add a couple of more pins at each corner. 
which should help keep it square. And with the outside squared, I can put the three middle pieces in and then I will start laying out all the slats that go across. For the last one, it's either have a really big gap or some really small gaps. And I'm gonna go with the small gap. So I'm just sort of gonna eyeball it. And here's one mold preventing back of the closet clothes spacer gizmo. Now I need to do it two more times. And that's the third one. So three closets, three air gap providers for the back of the closet. And yeah, this is just a whole bunch of scrap wood ripped down thin. Doesn't really matter how wide it is as long as you get that little bit of an air gap at the back. And so now let's go get it installed upstairs. It is really awkward trying to shoot video into a closet. So now I just take this and we will... Nope, that's not gonna work. So with the top shelf emptied, let's take this grid and it's a bit of a tight squeeze. And it's just gonna sit there with friction and with the clothes piled in front of it. So hopefully problem solved. So yeah, I know this is a really specific project for a problem that we're having. That's the fun of having a shop. You can make something custom for what you need, but hopefully this has been interesting. You've learned something and maybe this is gonna help somebody else out there who's having mold issues in their closet. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time.